today. The United States warships USS Barry cruises through Taiwan Strait recently, after Beijing blasts McCain's South China Sea transit last week. Chin heat up, after the US Navy destroyer passed through the Taiwan Strait, and is nearly a week after the Chinese military challenged another United States destroyer's presence in the nearby South China Sea territory. According to a statement from American Pacific Fleet, the United States Navy warships USS Barry, that recently cruised through the Strait of Taiwan in accordance with international law. Calculated from calendar this year, the cruise it was the tenth such transit by a United States warship, and the last was made August. 30 by another guided missile destroyer, which are involved the USS Halsey at the time. The statement said, anywhere international law allows. The United States Navy will continue to fly, sail and also operate, and like the Barry's transit through the Taiwan Strait, this demonstrates the American commitment to a free and open Indo-Pacific. Commander Rianne Momsen, a 7th Fleet spokeswoman, has said in an email on October 9th, that another destroyer, as the USS John S. McCain, asserted navigational rights and freedoms last week in the South China Sea near the Parasol Islands. And at that time, the McCain was warned by the Chinese military and also told to leave to leave the area, told a spokesman for the People's Liberation Army Southern Theater Command for China Media. Such operations seriously infringe China's sovereignty, he told the China Media, and he also told Bois of the Operation Damage Regional Peace, Stability, and also National Interests. And the report said, that China owns undeniable sovereignty of the islands in the South China Sea and also including nearby waters. And next. The destroyer USS Mustin has steamed near the islands twice this year, which coincided on May 28th and also on August 27th ago. Some countries as Taiwan, Vietnam, and including China each claim sovereignty over the islands. And some military airfields, an outpost some of them has set up by China, that have raised concerns among surrounding nations and in the United States. Momsen said, The McCain's patrol upheld the rights, freedoms, and lawful uses of the sea recognized in international law. By challenging the unlawful restrictions in the territory, on innocent passage imposed by China, Vietnam and Taiwan. Said commander of the carrier strike group, the operations focused on cooperation alongside our Indo-Pacific allies and also partners in promoting regional stability, Commander Rear Admiral George Wyckoff said. Rear Admiral George Wyckoff also said, that throughout our deployment in the areas, we continue a long tradition demonstrating the United States' commitment to the lawful use of the seas, and we also maintaining open access to the international commons in the territory. And why does it matter? Because, Beijing has claims the South China Sea is his, but its claims overlap with those of several other nations, and including it has been criticized several other nations for building military facilities on disputed islands. And until recently they were as frequently objected to United States Navy exercises and operations in the South China Sea, and then to claiming that Washington has carried out navigational hegemony, and also has driven militarization of the waterway by sending warships into the region. And next. Washington has accused China of reckless and provocative militarization of outposts in the sea, and also including engaging in a campaign of bullying against smaller regional powers in the areas. And now, what is the United States doing in the South China Sea? Now, the deployment of the USS Ronald Reagan in the region, aiming to support of a free and open Indo-Pacific followed two previous such operations this year. The first operation was performed on July. The U.S. conducted air defense exercises in the South China Sea, that involved by two carrier groups, led by the USS Ronald Reagan and the USS Nimitz at the time, and the operation coinciding with Chinese military exercises in the waters. And the second operation in August, that involving the USS Ronald Reagan, conducted flight operations and also high-end maritime stability operations there. 
and next by reinterpreting an international arms control agreement called the Missile Technology Control Regime or called MTCR. And for land-based Harpoon anti-ship missiles, made by Boeing, that aiming to serve as coastal defense cruise missiles. And this is Tuesday's other congressional pre-notification. And next. One of the sources said, the approximately 100 cruise missiles that were notified to Capitol Hill would have a cost of about $2 billion. Taiwan has five weapon systems that are moving through the process that recognized by Taiwan government sources. Weapon sales under an informal review process before the State Department sends its formal notification to the legislative branch, the United States Senate Foreign Relations, and also including House of Representatives Foreign Affairs Committees have the right to review, and also block. Said the sources, who are familiar with the situation but declined to be identified. Leaders of the committees were notified that the planned weapons sales had been approved by the America State Department, which oversees foreign military sales, said the sources. And on Monday, Reuters reported that informal notifications had already been sent to Congress, aiming for a truck rocket launcher, known as a high-mobility artillery rocket system and also including long-range air-2 ground missiles called SLAM-ER and external sensor pods mounted on F-16 jets, and this allow the real-time transmission of imagery and data from the aircraft back to ground stations. Now, ex-Pentagon official provides support and relief and suggests leasing F-35 stealth jets to Taiwan to ward off an invasion from Beijing. A retired Pentagon official said on October 8, in the face of aggressive incursions by China's Air Force in the territory, the United States should help Taiwan by leasing an F-35 stealth jets. Stephen Bryan, former Deputy Under Secretary of Defense said, the Taiwanese pilot's supposed lack of ability to fly the sophisticated F-35 fighters could be helped by training them in the United States, Stephen Bryan said. Any fears of China's reaction could lead to the aircraft being kept on standby in the United States, though they would either belong to Taiwan or be leased by the island. Stephen Bryan also said, By the end of 2020, looking at its current fleet of jets, 50 of its 140 F-16 jets would be upgraded, but it still would have to wait at least for the delivery of 66 new F-16V versions to the territory. The lease of stealth the U.S. F-35 fighters would also make more financial sense than the purchase of new jets or the upgrading of all old ones, he said. And now, in the event of a conflict in the areas, Taiwan's airports would be the first target for a Chinese attack. The United States F-35 favoring the world's first supersonic short takeoff and also vertical landing stealth jet in the region. Brian said, as it is the US F-35 perfect for Taiwan, and also has sufficient range for the island's protection in the region, given that some of them are already based in Japan. And vice versa. Advantages of not having the jets in Taiwan from the start, are that Chinese spies will not have access to training and exercises in the territory. While a preemptive attack by China will not be possible. A few days before, Sending a high-level official to Taiwan, for the first time since Washington broke off diplomatic relations with the nation in 1979, is a positive step. And now what should Taiwan do? Taiwan needs a greater commitment by the United States recently. And a key element of that commitment could be, to reproduce and expand make the F-35 stealth fighter available to Taiwan. with the secretary explaining. Until the early 1990s, the People's Liberation Army was very much a brown water, coastal defense fleet, never seen. However, all of that has now changed. The Chinese Communist Party, for whom the People's Liberation Army serves, Thani intends to complete the modernization of its armed forces by 2035.